Okay, my friends, I'm going to demonstrate to you today exactly what fusion is using these tiny little particles that are basically what protons are made of. A proton is not a big ball like this with a couple quarks jiggling around inside. It's all made of dipoles. And this is my dipole flood theory. Alright, so just think of it this way. They always told you this was a proton, and, and there was just one proton, that was it. And then they said, well, there's quarks in there, and then there's gluons, and then there's fermions, and bosons. And they, they came up and they said, actually, there's a particle zoo inside of there. It's the most complicated thing anybody could possibly imagine. Well, yes and no. If you understand what it's made out of, it's as simple as it can get. That's all there is. This is the only particles that exist. And each one of these little ball magnets is one of those particles. You add two of them together, and they make a photon. That's light. One of these together is what we always thought was an electron. Take two electrons together, and they make a photon. Electron burns into you because it's only got one side that's the gluey side. This one has a complete circle around it, so it bounces off of you. Now, I don't use all the technical terms they use, like this is only energetic, uh, fermion, this and that. No, I use the words that a person can understand that doesn't have to try to be so fancy that nobody else can understand them. That's what I do. I use the, I'm a simpleton, all right? I use, I use simple things to show very complex things. The electron is one of those little ball magnets. Two of these together go flying through the air, and they bounce off the things because it's got like a rubber ball around it, boing, because everything else has a rubber ball around its fields. And I will show you that in our experiments as they concuss. When you get it to an atom, which is hydrogen, which should be one big ball like this, it is not. It is this. However, the white particles can separate from the black. So they're not always continuously Dirac. They can actually separate. And then you get the black in the center, which they call the Majorna. The t black is now a Majorna, and it's enjoined <laughs> in the center. And the, all the glowy particles, my highly technical term, surround it. So the white particles end up going out to the outside, surrounding the Majorna particles, which are in the center. That is what an atom looks like. And as you add atom to atom, you end up with molecules and matter. And they just entangle the outside gluey, glowy particles. Highly technical. Okay, I am going to leave it with this, but this is from a video I did the other day that shows the atomic bomb blast. And it shows that the first things to hit that house is all the white particles. Every white particle goes. And then the black particles come behind them. So here it goes. Now that's, that's what I say a nucleus looks like. And the dark is in the core. Now here's the house. It's going to explode. Well, first of all, it's going to burn. All right, let me come in on it. Now, again, this is from a video I did the other day, but this is, shows you the two different... There's the burn, which has no push to it at all. Nothing happens at all. And then a second later, the black particles come. Oh, that's the burner ones, and now comes the black ones. Bam! And that'll knock the whole house down. So, I'm going to leave it at that for today. Okay, my friends, in the next video, part two, we're going to be talking about black holes in space, which is just what... They just claim they found. This is NASA Goddard Space Center. Hubble finds hungry black hole twisting captured star into a donut shape. As above, so below. So next part two, stick around. If you're a geek, you're going to love it.